Hello and welcome to Being Youthful. I am Kim Beegler, the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill. I'm sitting here in the wool mill in Halsey, Oregon, and it's been two weeks, so I missed you all. Uh, welcome back if you are returning, and if you're new, welcome. I will talk a lot about wool and owning a wool mill, having animals, processing wool, all the wooly things, and um, welcome. Okay, so two weeks it's been. There's a fly and it's gonna drive me crazy. I'm just letting you all know. And a big buzzer is gonna go off in a minute. I'm gonna let you know that too. So we'll see how the fly does. <laughs> There's like one fly in the building always and it wants to bother me. So, okay, so this episode, I'm going to do some knitting updates. I have got some mill videos, some fun mill videos of stuff I've been working on back there. I've got some new yarn to show you. And we're gonna talk about how to gauge how much fiber you need for a sweater quantity to hand spin. So, um, okay, let's get started. Do you see this fly? I'm telling you. Okay, so Mitch and I just got back. That's why we were, I was gone. I didn't do an episode last week. And it was so nice. We were out about an hour from here along the McKinsey River. We rented a little cabin. We had Nigel and Velma with us and um, our small dogs. And we just spun and, and well, we, I spun, knit, did all that thing. Mitch did all his hobby. It was just really awesome and relaxing and we did not have cell service. So that was pretty amazing. Other than like getting the random text and occasionally we could get our emails to upload. Um, there was no social media and I'm not gonna lie you all. I didn't miss it. I did not miss it. So um, I missed you all on YouTube. But Instagram, I mean, I miss you on Instagram, but the actual act of posting and doing all that stuff, man, it gave me a moment to realize, there's my buzzer, um, that I need to slow down a little bit on there because uh, it's just, it's a lot. It takes a lot of effort and making those reels nowadays. Oh my goodness, you all. So um, join me here on YouTube um, because my Instagram is going to slow down a bit here for my own <laughs> mental health, for sure. Um, but I missed you all. And I like, there's such a community of um, getting to know people a little bit more in here. So I love that. Uh, anyway, okay, let's talk knitting and hand spinning because I have been at it. And I thought I got that yarn last episode. I forgot to bring the yarn. So now I have the yarn that I finished hand spinning. Okay, I haven't finished. Uh, this is probably half. Um, here it is. So this is one of our sheep, Moira Rose. This is her lamb fleece. I kept it for myself. It was kind of one of the darker naturals that we have. And it's gorgeous. This is about half of it. It's probably a fingering to a DK weight. Um, it poofed quite a bit when I soaked it. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this. I might do some color work with another recent um, yarn I did. Let's see, I have a lot of yardage, a lot of yardage. Okay. So I have been, I've been spinning like crazy. I was spinning something so fun. I'm plying so fun at home right now. And um, I'm excited to share that with you all next week because it'll be, some of it at least will be done. Okay, so we've got that hand spun. Let's show you what I'm working on my faucet because it's hand spun and it, I didn't weigh this, but that'll come up in a minute. Okay, here's my faucet. I am just cruising now on the body. I still have several inches to go there, but we're making some headway with it. And make sure I'm not messing this microphone up too much and driving you all crazy. Um, okay. There it is. So now I'm just like knitting, knitting, knitting. I have the cuff on the bottom after that. And then there's just cuffs on the sleeves. It's a runaway and I tried it on. I will put a picture up here. I think I posted it somewhere, but I'll picture, put a picture on here right before we were leaving. I was like, before I just knit inches away, let's make sure it fits and it aces. But it was looking really small. Um, but this is 100% hand spun Rommeldale natural colors. It's epic. It's really epic. So I'm excited. It's short sleeve, but I will layer it because um, it's the Pacific Northwest. So we just do that. That's just what we do. So uh, that's my hand spun projects. Faucet. Oh no, my Sophie. Where'd my Sophie go? I finished my Sophie. I have a finished thing, you all. Yahoo. So this is the Sophie scarf. Um, let me put it upside right. Wish is trying to play with it. Um, here she is. And I did the larger size. 
Uh, and I used Utopia yarn. I've got it in the online shop. It's 100% US grown and milled and dyed. All of the good things that you know I love if you've been watching enough. So I did the larger size and um, so I can wrap it and I can do a little loop here and then I'm good to go. I really love it. I love how it lays because of that border that it's got on the edges. Very easy knit, uh, great for hands fun because you can run out. I mean, it's a one skein wonder type of a project. So I am thrilled with it. I'm glad I did too because in the mill, I like to have things that don't dangle too far. Um, and these I can even tuck into like if I'm wearing overalls and stuff, but they're not dangling so far that I worry about getting anything caught up in my machinery. So um, I'm thrilled I finished this there, woven the ends, because for the first time I was traveling and I actually had a pack that had my scissors and my needles and the measuring tape. Oh my gosh, you all. That was like a miracle of in and of itself. So. Um, there is my Sophie and I am thrilled. I'm going to wear the heck out of it. Um, I'm going to wear the heck out of it. And this yarn, the Utopia yarn, I should mention, um, this actually is a smidge damp still. Um, it softens up even more like the second it hit the water, I could feel the change in the texture of the yarn that it softened up so much more. So it is 100% next to skin soft, I believe. I think most would agree. Okay, so I finished that, which meant while we were there that I, because of course I brought like 17 knitting projects. I brought every knitting project I had, which isn't a lot because I've been trying to keep it real um, and a little bit lighter. So I brought, and then I brought my Nano, my little e-spinner, and I brought my standard spinning wheel and um, I used everything. I was like, I'm, I, every day I like rotated through stuff. So that was exciting. So I finished that, which meant I could cast on. And of course I brought something new to cast on. And this is, will lead into the new yarn that I have in the shop. But here is my first finished mitten. Well, not finished. Okay, it needs a thumb still. But I just busted, I forgot how fast mittens are, man. If you need a quick win on a knitting project, do a mitten and this is the tin can knits like the simplest mitten i'll put it in the show notes i forget the name but it's like the simplest mitten or whatever which it truly is because you just you know cast on um your ribbing down here and then you do a few increases for the thumb and then you just knit away and this took me no time at all so here are my thoughts on it i have a lot of thoughts a lot of big thoughts for you all for knitters and i'm excited to hear what you all have to say um, first off, I did this magic loop and when I finished my nurtured sweater, I had a big think over about magic loop. And I said, I don't think I'm going to use it anymore for doing sleeves when I'm doing sweaters <sighs> because I just tend to knit tighter when I'm doing magic loop. So for whatever reason, I thought, oh, it'll just be for sleeves. I'm going to do this magic loop. And it turns out, no, Kim. Kim, this is big, guys. I don't like Magic Loop. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to read your comments about this because I know some people are gung-ho. I was gung-ho for a while. I really was. Now I feel like I'm going old school by going back to dun -dun, double points. But um, here's why I don't. Because I knit too tight. And I was knitting Continental, for, which for me is my looser way to knit, to knit left-handed versus right-handed. And it was still too tight as far as how I was handling the, the yarn and the needles. I have to turn this light, it's like blinding me, oh my gosh. Um, so I finished this one. So my cuff, I also knit Continental and I wish, I, okay, we could talk about the things I did wrong also. I actually knit the, this, this very well. The things I did wrong were somehow, I didn't use their app, which if you've knit anything recently with Tin Can Knits, you should use their app um, because you can enter in all the information and then it just lets you run through the actual size you're doing. So it's an app you can add to your phone. Did I use it? No. Um, so I ended up using the wrong size needles. Not horribly wrong, but, um, Definitely could have used bigger needles. It worked out fine. Uh, and then I didn't, I only switched, like the ribbing was, you know, say I'd, I think I did it on a four, I should have gone to a six. Did I? 
No, I went to a five. So I don't even know. It worked out fine. Um, this is, you know, I need mittens to do farm chores and stuff during the um, winter because I, this is the only way I can keep my fingers warm. Uh, so it worked out fine, but here's what I'm doing because now I'm just like, I don't know. I just have to for myself. I'm going to knit the second one different, which I thought would be kind of fun to see the difference anyway. And because I'll end up being pretty rough with them, it's fine. Um, I'm probably going to stick to the four and the five because, um, this is making for a tighter fabric than maybe you may want, but for what I'm going to be doing with them, which is like more farm chores, walking the dogs, leashes running through my hands. It's not bad that it's just a smidge tighter. But what I did was, you guys, I did it. I just said, you know what? I'm just doing this. I cast on the second one in on, on double points. So we're going to see how it goes. I cast it on a four. So I'm going to do the same size needles, but I am going to, two things I'm changing are double point needles and I am doing my ribbing right-handed. And then I'm going to knit the body left-handed. Um, cause I, we'll see how it goes. Here's the thing about magic loop that I realized does not work for me. Not only do I knit tighter, right? So I could go up a needle size. That would be one way to deal with it. But the fact is that it still is like tighter on the needles, which I don't love. Like my actual stitches on the needles are tighter. And I like having space. Like when you do um, magic loop, a lot of times your, your other stitches are just like sitting. I don't know why. I think that makes me knit even tighter. And so I like when I'm doing double points that there's like this space here, right? I can't wait to hear what you all think. How you all do your in the round, uh, if you're doing smaller things like this, I'm excited to hear. I know people are very passionate about this, so I don't wanna break anybody's heart. I love if you love doing Magic Loop. I just finally have to accept the fact that I don't love it for multiple reasons. The last reason is that because of the way I'm knitting, which is tighter, it gets into my elbows way more than anything. And I'm knitting something else in the round right now um, you know, just on circulars and I'm knitting it left-handed and I'm not getting the same issues I was getting when I was doing magic loop. So there you go. Okay. So I'm starting. This is a great pattern. Use the app. Use the app. I would say that for sure. Not because of any way they've written it, but man, if they have it and it's free, use it. And I think the pattern is free on there too. Like you can download the pattern, you open the pattern up in the app and then pick your sizes and then voila, it just shows you that size, what you're doing. So pretty awesome. Um, so the yarn, you all, this yarn that I'm using is Sistari, uh, which is a wool mill in Virginia. It is, so it's 100% American grown and milled, and it is pretty fabulous. I have not blocked this yet, but I, this is next to Skin Soft again. For extra sensitive people, maybe not, but I think that it is. And once it gets blocked, I think it's going to loosen up even more. It is a, I think they say they, they're Rambouillet Columbia Crosses is what they, um, what their wool is. And I'm gonna show you the colors that I have got here in the online shop. Now you can get them there, or if you're coming to Mill Day on Saturday, um, I've got it in the shop. So uh, here is natural white. You gotta love a natural white. Um, light, that's their light gray, which, no, I think I have two natural whites, I do. Okay, I don't have the light gray, but it's in between this, and I'll show you the, dark gray which i do have right here in my lap okay dark gray so it's a little bit in between those two right um actually sorry i do have it it's what i did that um uh, this is the light gray so you can see kind of in between okay then we have the marls so this is the medium and the dark gray together and this is the wooliest wool yarn i'm telling you and this is the light and the medium and you all it even i mean it truly smells wooly still 100 it just is 
sorry, I had to sniff it, but it is like, when I opened the box, I was like, yes. And I have been to the Sistari Mill. We also carry their cotton yarn. Um, and I just, anyway. Um, this is the Cranberry. Ugh, this color kills me. I'm gonna have to order more because we're already running low. This is the Woodland Brown. I just, this color. And one more color that we have got is, and this one is the Blackberry. So anyway, new yarn, new yarn. So if you're coming to Mill Day on Saturday, hurrah, or you can get some of it online. Um, it's a worsted weight, it's a two ply, um, and it's 170 yards per seam, and they're very affordable, very affordable. So you gotta love that. So there's my big epiphany for you all on Magic Loop. I cannot wait for me. I should say my epiphany for me on Magic Loop. But if for some reason you're knitting Magic Loop and finding maybe you weren't correlating that you were having more aches and pains, it may be um, something to do with the Magic Loop or how you're knitting. So anyway, but maybe not. Okay. Whew. We're up to date on that stuff. What's happening at the mill? Um, mill days this Saturday, as I mentioned, 10 to 3. I will be here. We had an amazing group of people come out uh, two weeks ago and lots of people coming through the mill shop, just um, browsing, shopping, doing all of that. There will be fibers, there will be yarns, there will be snacks, there will be smiles and fun. So come on out if you are in the area, spend the day. A lot of people come and just hang out from 10 to 3 when we're open. So, um, Okay, what else? I have two videos for you, which I'll show you here in a minute um, after we talk about how I decide how much fiber for yarn. Um, but um, I have a great video on some border luster wool that I had part of it dyed in the wool and the other part processed out. And then I also have a fun video. Um, this is some of that horn dorset, the variegated roving. I think I showed in the last video. It was from Fiber Club last month. It disappeared quickly. I found another fleece. I have processed it up. I'm pretty sure by the time this goes, it will be all gone. Um, and actually, sorry, if there's any left, I'll post it next week. If you are on my, if you're not on my email list, you should get on my email list because you can go to my website. There's a link in the show notes, basically anywhere on the site, you can get logged in as soon as you click it. But um, my Patreon patrons, and my emailers are the first ones to get noticed. And like with these fibers that I'm gonna show you the videos for, they're basically already gone. Um, Patreon, generally speaking, gets it first. So for $5 a month, not only are you supporting a, um, what I do here, thank you, I appreciate all of you, um, but you also get early bird notice on fibers as they come through. So, um, or if you're on my email list, you get it pretty quick too. So usually once the email list goes out, um, a lot of the extra fancy stuff is gone. So get on the email list. Also, it's fun, right? Okay, so let's talk about how somebody asked, and I forgot who, I apologize, I didn't go back to look who asked this, but they were asking how I decide how much yarn, how much fiber to get to do a sweater quantity when you're hand spinning. Um, so I weighed out some of my sweaters, and you could do this at home as long as they're wool, as long as they're wool, um, because I generally speaking, I have like a sweater I go off of now. Like I know the measurements, this is like the length I like, and then I'll play with it obviously. Like with my nurtured, I did it a little bit shorter, but not as short as the pattern said. So um, you can kind of gauge by taking some of your favorite sweaters if they're wool and weighing them, and you probably know what weight they were. Um, so that will help gauge that. Generally speaking, I say, to buy a minimum, buy a solid two pounds of a fiber. That's kind of a safe zone. Worst case, you have extra and you could make a knit or make a hat or make another piece of accessory to match. Um, it depends, of course, on what size of the pattern you're gonna make. So I went through some of my sweaters and I weighed them so that you could have an idea. I generally speaking, am doing a small or a medium in most of the sweater patterns that I do. So that gives you some gauge. Of, um, and you might be surprised. You might be surprised by how light they are. So this um, sweater is a cardigan. It's very lightweight cardigan. Uh, I'd say it was a fingering weight. It was a Rambouillet single. 
here comes the truck. That I plied with a mohair, already dyed mohair, probably has a little bit of nylon in it, but an already dyed mohair single. So how fun is that, right? I only had to spin half the yarn. Um, it's got a cuff on it, it's got long sleeves, it's your average. So this sweater, this cardigan weighed 10 ounces. That's not that much. So there's something to think about, right? Um, this, so this is a um, vest, just to add the vest into that. Um, it's a standard, I'd say it's a standard length. Um, this is a Shetland alpaca and it weighs seven ounces. There is a little pattern on it, right? Um, here is a Shetland, 100% Shetland sweater that I did. I do a lot of Shetland because I have them, but um, so you have to take into account some fibers will weigh more than others. Shetland's kind of a medium, I'd say, on the weight, like a gauntlet is going to weigh more. Also take into account how heavy do you want this sweater to be, right? Like, do you want to be wearing a four pound sweater? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, okay, so this is, uh, and I will put the names of all of these patterns and the weights of each sweater, it's just so you can get a gauge, but this is, um, just your super standard pullover cardigan, or pullover cardigan, your super standard pullover, 100% um, Shetland. I did this like a normal length, and this weighed 15 ounces, so not even quite a pound. Um, and I have one more. Oh, my nurture, the one I just finished. Um, and this is, you know, going to be heavier because there was a lot of texture to it, and my sleeves are a little bit heavier. Anyway, so this, and but it's a smidge cropped, but it's also a smidge wide. So um, I think it kind of balances out. This one was 1.2 ounces, so just over a pound. So that gives you some idea. I'd say I'm, like I said, I usually am probably somewhere, in, I'd probably say medium is generally speaking what I am knitting on. So um, depending on your size, kind of take that into account. Uh, my friend Sandy, who if you have been on, uh, if you're in Fiber Club, you may have met her, or if you've been in the mill shop, she is a hand spun sweater knitter, uh, like a lot. She's been knitting her own sweaters for a long time out of hand spun. She is definitely a small, I'd say she's petite, and she generally buys about 20 ounces for knowing she wants to do a sweater. Um, so go up from there. You know, I would say two pounds, you're probably pretty safe. Uh, and the last fleece that I purchased for myself, that um, beautiful Cheviot fleece that I got, I think it weighed in at like four pounds once I, um, and we're talking clean processed wool. Like I should clarify that, not raw and not unprocessed because you're gonna lose some in the processing itself, right? Whether you're carding it at home, all those things, you're gonna lose some weight. So this I'm talking finished, ready to hand spin. This is what you've got. Um, I think about two pounds is going to be solid for you. Anyway, my, the fleece I got was about four pounds. That's way more than I'm going to need for a sweater. So I think I ended up about two and a half pounds. I was giving it away to different, to my Patreon people and different people. Um, so I think I have about two and a half pounds. And I said, Whoop, we're stopping there because I don't know. I don't know what I'm knitting out of it. But um, if you're just doing kind of your standard sweater, I think two pounds is going to get you pretty far. Uh, I hope that helps. Anybody, if you have suggestions, throw them in the comments because it's always wonderful to hear other um, hand spinners thought process on. But if you have no idea what sweater you're doing, two pounds is a solid place to start to have quantity wise. Okay. Again, I've talked too much, so we're gonna go watch some videos. I have got um, one or two quick videos from our trip to the river, just to see how beautiful it was. And I've got some fun mail videos in the back, and then I'll be back to say my fond farewells for this week. So I will see you in a few minutes. Okay, you all, we are carting up something super fun here. There is not a lot of it, and I'm hoping hoping or not hoping, I don't know, that there is some of it left when this uh, airs, when I get this video up. But this is border luster wool that I have dyed part of it in the wool, different shades of blue. There's my washing machine. And then there is some of it I decided last minute to leave natural gray. 
so that I could do a little bit of like a tonal uh, pattern on this. So I'll get it started and you'll see here what I'm talking about because it's going to play through and kind of blend out some of these and also have a gray. I'm just having fun with color basically. So we're going to get this. Oops. Nope. We're going to turn the machine on and then we're going to get this started. And I did a little batch of this right before mill day and then it all disappeared at mill day. So there's just kind of half of a batch left, left now. Um, it's pretty fun. It is pretty fun. So you can see I did um, about two thirds of the run is the blue. And then there's kind of a quick transition here with uh, the gray. So I weigh it all out so I kind of know and I can get a similar transition throughout it. And then we'll go see what's happening on the other side. See the gray is just starting to go in there. And here we come out the other side and we're pretty hard into the blue right now. But it will transition here pretty quick. We'll start to get some gray going. And I'll probably pause so you don't have to just like wait, wait, and wait. But it should start coming through pretty quick. And then we'll get like a heavy gray part. So it's starting to lighten up here, you can see. And I'll pause till we get to a really solid gray part. So you can see we're getting pretty light here. Still some blue in there. There's always going to be some because I did that gray repeat pretty short. But it'll get gray and then it'll start to turn back to blue which it is starting to pick up a little more blue again so it's just gonna make a really pretty and fun yarn all right and here we go we're getting that blue coming back in now on the next transition we'll just get blue 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 so the gray is pretty quick and there's always gonna be a little blue in it but that's kind of how I wanted that to play out so Fun, fun. All right, you all, this is super quick video, but here is the last of, this is the Horn Dorset, and I did, so I'm doing it different because in my Patreon we were talking about um, how this looks when you're doing it into bumps, and I'll show you the one that I finished. I did a little video for them earlier. And this is how, when I have all three colors, this is how that played out. So it's just the roving. And as it plays through the colors, it just loads up and loads up and loads up. And this is gonna start switching colors here pretty soon. And you can start to see that lighter green coming in. This one doesn't have any more of that purpley pink. Uh, I ran out of that. So I thought, oh, I'll just run this one back and forth. Um, just to show and I thought I'd show you all kind of how it how you do a bump that looks like that where the colors are on top of each other and it's still roving it kind of looks like a bat but it's indeed still roving so there you go I there I there probably is not going to be any of this left this is the last batch that I found one fleece four dyed it up um, and if you're not on my newsletter list or on my patreon then this probably will go pretty quick. So um, get on one of those if you want first alerts. Okay.
Okay, I hope that was fun. I had a lot of fun um, making all those fibers. So I will continue to be dyeing in the wool and making beautiful fibers. Get on the email list if you um, are bummed that you are missing out on getting some of these fibers. A lot of them do go pretty quick and I'm having a hard time keeping up, which is wonderful. And thank you. Uh, the fiber club has grown quite a bit over the past two months and that is taking up extra time and um, which is wonderful. It's just, uh, it's taking a little bit of time away from just having other fibers. So there you go. Uh, if you want a guaranteed fiber every month, join fiber club. There is room, although I am going to cut it very soon because I can only um, plan on so much wool each month. And so um, at some point I will start to feel very overwhelmed and I'm feeling good right now. So I have a few spots open, but I will be cutting it pretty soon here if it continues to grow. So um, check that out on my website. I'll put a link in the show notes to Fiber Club, but it is a way to get some wool every month and some fun wool. Uh, so Okay, thank you all so much for joining me again and for um, watching and listening and commenting. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, you hit the little bell. There's like a little bell thing if you want to be notified, extra notified when my new episodes come out. Hopefully we'll be back to once a week now, but it was nice to take a little break. It was nice. Although I, I'm not going to lie, you all. I was like, should I? And then just, just leave town. I did. So, um, Thank you all, everybody. Until I see you next week, be safe, stay healthy, and be kind to all of your neighbors. All right, I will see you soon. Thank you so much.